So in this video, we're going to look at extending an if-then statement to include other options, which would be an if-then-else, meaning if something is true, do the then part, and if it's not, then do something else. So for example, this is the same layout that we had in the if example where we have a number input box and a button and a result label. And my code right now is the same code that was set up from the if example, where when the button's clicked, we're changing the result label text to an empty string, changing the background color of the label to white, and then it's going to check to see if the number that we put in was greater than zero, then change the text that's in the result label and to change the background color. So what happens with that, just as a quick review, is that if we put in a number that is not a valid number and we click go, nothing happens. And that's because our code is only designed if to do something if the text is greater than zero. So negative five is not greater than zero. But if we put in just anything greater than zero and tapped the button, then our result label shows up and changes color. So if we wanted to show a message to say that it wasn't valid because it wasn't greater than zero, then what can we do? And that's where the else part comes in. So when we grab this if then block, remember if then is under the control blocks here. We want to extend this or expand it so that it includes an else block. So if it's greater than zero, do this else or otherwise do something else. So to get the else part, if you notice there's this little gear button here, it's called the mutator button. Mutator means to change or morph something. So we're going to change the structure of the if then block. So I'm going to click on that mutator button and you can see we have else if and else. For right now, we're just going to do an else block. So this is an interactive pop-up here, so to change this, we drag the else in here. Now a lot of times people try to drag it down here, but it doesn't work. It has to be dragged over in this section. And then you can see that it changed the structure to be an if-then-else block. So to get rid of this, we can just click off of it. So now on the else section, we put in what we wanted to do if it's not greater than zero. And again, I'm going to duplicate my blocks because I'm going to just change the message. So I would, I'll would i say not valid. And we'll change the background color so that it will be red instead of green. So if this is true, if it's greater than zero, it's going to say valid, turn the label green. Otherwise, if it's not greater than zero, it's going to say not valid and change it to red. So let's give it a try. Right, so right now, five is in there. I'm going to change this to another number. So let's change it to minus three and we'll click go. And we have our else. And then if I change it to just plain old three, it is valid. What happens if we put in zero? Okay, zero makes it false, not valid. So if we check here, right, number input text greater than zero. So zero greater than zero is not true, so it doesn't do the valid or the green, it jumps down to the else and executes 
the blocks that are in here. So that's a basic example of how to use an if then else block within your code blocks.